basically to just lie to my face. I just don't like liars, so just tell me the truth. If you say, hey, that's within our spec, they're not gonna do anything about that. At least I wouldn't waste my time, and then if I didn't really want it, I wouldn't assign for the car. Gotta go and clean my car off, wash it off. Been a while after we got back from RE Plus, the car's just been sitting there, needs to get cleaned. Basically, in this video, I'll be talking about my 2025 Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive that I've had for several months now. I can't even remember exactly when I got it. I think I got it in, was it May or March? What month is it? I think it was May, the beginning of May. So, and I got about 6,100 miles on this thing so far. And basically, I want to go wash it. I just got back from RE Plus. You know, for those people that don't know, basically, I got a DIY solar and self-reliance kind of channel and of course i have a couple of evs you know i have gas vehicles too because to me it don't make sense just to have evs let's just you know get that right off the bat out there i'm definitely a gas vehicle person but i'm also an electric vehicle person so i like them all but basically i got a lot of solar and i can charge these evs you know be able to get back and forth to work for free And of course, you know, you get all the benefits of having a Tesla, all the gadgets and all the other stuff. But, you know, I'm gonna keep it real and I'm gonna tell you the positives and the negatives to Tesla. And so one of the negatives, I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. I ain't gonna start with a positive. But one of the negatives is when I picked the vehicle up, there was a few little problems here and there. And right off the bat, they were acting like, hey, you schedule an appointment, you know, you can get this stuff fixed. So basically I scheduled an appointment to get the stuff fixed and almost nothing got fixed. You know, basically I wasted my time, drove hundreds of miles and took, you know, several hours, had to drive like two hours down the road to a Tesla dealer and get there. And the first thing the person tells me is like, well, they're probably not gonna fix any of this stuff, you know, because they're gonna say it's within the specs of, you know, the manufacturing process or whatever. I mean, that's fine, but why not tell me that when I pick the car up? Don't tell me, hey, you're gonna fix all this stuff. Like, there's a little paint problems and, you know, some uh, spacing issues with the uh, brake lights and stuff like that. One of them, you know, it looked like it was in line with everything. And then another one, it was a larger gap. And I'll go ahead and show you some pictures of that stuff while I'm talking about it. But to me, that just don't make sense. When you get a brand new vehicle, everything should just be right. It should be even, you know, I understand there's gonna be some kind of tolerances, but if I can see that it's a problem, you know, that tolerance is not close enough. So to me, that's definitely a big problem, but you know, I can get over that, you know, whatever. I can get over it and just roll with it, but don't tell me when I'm picking it up that that's not gonna be a problem. All right, now let's get to one of the positives. So we're just gonna go back and forth here. Uh, one of the positives is the range of this vehicle. It's unbelievable. I, had an, I have a 2019 Nissan Leaf and the range is terrible. Let me go ahead and let the car just drive myself. That's another thing I like, but we're gonna talk about that later. But basically the range of this vehicle is unbelievable. I drove this thing to Charlotte Airport and drove it to Charlotte a couple of times. And you know, I can get all the way there and back to my house, you know, which was well over a two hour drive. It's probably closer to two and a half hours and not have a problem, you know, have enough range to get back and forth. My Nissan Leaf, there's no way I could do that. I couldn't even barely make it up there you know, there's a bike here on the side of the road. Is the car gonna move over? Yep. So the car is driving itself. So I got the full self driving right now. And you know, there's a bike on the side of the road. Bam, we're gonna go ahead and miss that thing. But basically, you know, there's, there, there are a ton of things I like about this and the range is probably the most important thing to me. All right, another negative. So we'll get to negative number two. Whenever I purchased this car, I went on ahead and purchased a charger, not at the same time as the car, but on their, on their website. And the Tesla website got it shipped to me, so I had the charger before I went and picked the vehicle up because I just forgot to order it with the vehicle. I tried to use it when I got the vehicle home, and initially it charged it. But within a week, the charger stopped working. I was having problems with it. I think I got some video of that. I'll go ahead and show you. You know, I think, bam, it will pop up with like a red light and say the charger's not recognized or some nonsense. And it would say it over here on the screen. I'll go ahead and show you that as well. And I'm like, man, what's going on here? So, you know, I kind of tried to reset everything, disconnected. And for a while, I couldn't even get the thing disconnected. It wouldn't even disconnect. 
you know so i had to try to figure all that out but bottom line is i got it disconnected reconnected it back and then it did the same thing again and so i contacted tesla through the app which is the only way i knew to contact them there's not like a a, a number for the actual online shop that i can find maybe i'm just wrong and so i went to the tesla app and i mean the shop online and sent them an email or whatever a message on the uh, website and never got a response ever 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 so then i went through the app through the maintenance on the app which is not really for the shop and tried to get like a warranty thing done and basically man my car is going too fast slow down so i had to uh the speed set totally wrong on this thing i had it on hurry you can put it on standard anyway we'll get that in a minute but my car and went through the app trying to you know get this war to me it's a warranty issue for the chargers so i was like hey i'll try it and they said no you can't do that through here if you do you got to come in all the way to the shop again drive another two and a half hours up to tesla to get to the test the charger and i'm like that's ridiculous i said i didn't pick it up from tesla i got this thing shipped so you should ship me another one give me a shipping label i'll ship this one back to you and you know whatever they said well we didn't really have anything to do with that because we're not the shop and so basically I didn't get any help with the thing. I still have the piece of junk charger that I paid hundreds of dollars for and it doesn't work. So the customer service to me has been terrible. I mean, and I'm all about not having to talk to people and all that, use the app. But you know, when something's just right, it should be fixed. You know, I bought the thing from them. It didn't work. They should just immediately take that thing back. I did all the troubleshooting. I told them every single thing I did to try to fix it and they didn't help at all they said i had to drive all the way up there and they didn't have nothing to do with the online store blah 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 they said i could still get a warranty but it would be i had to drive and waste a whole day driving up there staying at the tesla dealer slash uh, shop i'm like that is just totally ridiculous when i ordered a thing online so totally hate that totally hate the customer service it has been abhorrent terrible you know you buy something you don't get any warranty I contacted the state attorney general of North Carolina and just to see if they would say anything, I ain't even heard anything from them. So, hey, more government that doesn't really help you. So that's a whole nother situation. But I still have the car and there's still things about it I like. And one of the things I like is definitely the full self-driving if you have it. You know, I've had it free. I had it free for like maybe three months or something like that. And then I paid for it for one month this month just to try it out again some more. And be able to so my car can drive me back from the airport because i went to re plus to the big renewable energy uh convention so i knew when i got back i wouldn't feel like you know driving this whole way on the freeways and stuff like that the car does really good on that it does pretty good on back roads as well it doesn't always pick the right directions in my opinion the if i'm driving a certain way and the car knows i drive that way it should be able to figure that out and then drive the same way i drive it always tries to go a different way when i'm trying to go to work don't like that part about it but the full self-driving stuff does work pretty good all right another negative if you're trying to play something on your phone like i got an iphone and if i want to just listen to something like on youtube or something like that and i try to click on my phone and just listen to it even if it's a podcast and i can close my phone out and not be watching it it won't play through the uh the system my speakers on the car to me that's insanity so there's no apple car player or anything like that you know it's a uh, uh, tesla based stuff and to me, that is just ridiculous. Come on. I'm not sitting there watching it on my phone. I'm just trying to listen to something because there's a lot of YouTube channels that, that are just going there and do talking head stuff. And I like to listen to them or it's just a straight up podcast, but it has a video format and terrible. I can't listen to it. I had to disconnect the Bluetooth on the, my phone so it won't connect to the car and then it'll play through my phone so it won't even play through the speakers. I mean, come on, Tesla. Let's get this thing together. I should be able to play something on my phone and it should play through the speakers on the system. I mean, a lot of times I'll be driving home from work and I want to listen to a game or something and I want to play it through my phone. I guess I'm going to have to download more apps on the Tesla and try to figure out. But I just, you know, go on it where I can watch it and just listen, you know, and you can still close the phone out. So I don't even understand all that mess. So that's another negative. But like I said, there are still plenty of positives. So another positive is the ride quality to me on this Model 3, you know, is great. You know, 
it it's just been smooth and i definitely like it you know it's not going to be some kind of luxury vehicle like a lot of people might like and have but for us normal people it's definitely going to work and another thing i don't like is it seems like the paint and some of the body panels and all that stuff are not the sturdiest thing in the world so you get all this information about you know you know not pushing down on stuff real hard like you know the frunk and stuff like that to me that stuff should be sturdy enough and heavy duty enough that i can wash the stuff and you know close the thing and push down on it without having to worry about it getting a dent in it just from barely touching the thing so I haven't got any dents in it that I know of yet from doing any of that, but it's just all the information you get when you start looking this stuff up online. I know about that in advance, so part of that is definitely my own fault, but it's just one thing I wish Tesla would fix. You shouldn't have to worry about that. Like I said, I picked the paint color on this car that was an additional $2,000, and the paint, you know, had problems. So like you, like you saw in the number one thing I talked about. So that, that's definitely a negative, and they didn't fix it, and so... I definitely don't like that part but i'm just about to pull up here at the car wash basically just to wash the car off i'm not doing like a full clean internet like that just i'm just gonna pretty much just spray it off and try to get the dust and bugs off of this thing then after i do that i'll come back here we'll talk about some more things so how many miles you get per kilowatt and all that kind of stuff which I, like i said before it's pretty good especially the way i drive which is probably more aggressive than most people Splend. But let's just jump right back into it. Would I buy this car again? You know, if I had to do it all over again. I mean, I wish I'd have known about the customer service problems and the charger, of course, all that up front. I, I mean, I just would have used a no Tesla name brand charger like I had to buy anyway, because the charger that's Tesla did not work. Let's see where this car is turning. If the customer service and warranty stuff was better, I would 100% do it. I mean, now it has nothing to do with the car. I like the car itself and kind of the driving experience and all that stuff. It's just the warranty and customer service information, basically people lying to your face. I do not like that. Just tell the truth. So I go pick the car up. Don't just try to lie to me to get me out of there and say, yep, we'll write all this down. We're gonna handle it. You know, you ain't gotta worry about it. That's basically what they said. I wish I were, would have recorded everything now. And I did record some clips of the car, but I didn't record exactly what they were saying. And I really wish I would have. So I could just have it on them and be able to show it to you guys that basically they just lied to my face. I just don't like liars. So just tell me the truth. If you say, hey, that's within our spec, they're not going to do anything about that. At least I wouldn't waste my time. And then if I didn't really want it, I wouldn't have signed for the car and wouldn't have took it. I would have just said, no, thank you. And just, uh, just gave it back and said, I'm not accepting it. But, you know, it just is what it is. Definitely frustrating. And, I mean, the car point, though, I mean, I like the car. And let me tell you what the kilowatt hours is that I've been getting. So, I think for the last 6,146 miles. And this isn't just a, a coasting driving. It's kind of being aggressive some and all that. That's the way I drive. I've got... 263 watt hours a mile you know if that means anything to you so you can go ahead and convert all that but i think it's um what i actually do is i'll go ahead and calculate it and i'll put it up here on the screen what it is because you know i might be, be totally off with that but that's about a little over four miles to the kilowatt hour so you know or right at it at least you know close to it three and some change you know do the math but i'll put it up on the screen here just to make sure it's perfectly clear. I would next time, but I get a rear-wheel drive, I'd probably rather have the performance and the all-wheel drive models. Just to have a little more uh, power, just a little more fun to drive, I guess. That's part of the thing with electric, is just having that fun of having to torque and to get up and go right from the get-go. So that's what I like about it. And of course, you can be self-reliant and charge it yourself. And I have my own solar system and charge it. If you're interested in any of that, hey, you can go look at all my other videos. Basically, I have a whole system running my house and just trying to run as off grid as possible. Of course, I do use some grid power when needed, but then I have another system that's separate that runs my uh, building and that's where I charge my car at, you know, 80 or 90% of the time, I guess. If I didn't get a lot of sun and 
you know, I need to, I'll use my big battery bank on my house to charge the car back some. And you know, hey, you just gotta do what you gotta do. And maybe like, maybe like 1% to 2% of the time, I've had to charge it back from the grid. I've tried to not do that as much as possible, but sometimes it's just cloudy for a week straight and you really don't have a choice but to charge a little bit here and there, you know, from the grid, unless you just have a really big system and you know you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff but i use a lot of power every day at my house so i kind of have to worry about that so but if you guys would like more content like this basically just talking about this car and going into more in-depth reviews and me just riding around and kind of talking about it but actually showing you stuff about it i'm definitely uh, uh able to do that if that's what you guys want now these cars are blocking the road I'm definitely able to do that if you guys are looking for that kind of stuff. And I'm probably going to go ahead and put this on my main channel and my secondary channel. I'm going to be starting a new channel. Uh, basically about, I think, I think I'm going to name it Off Grid Tesla or something like that. And that way I can just talk about more of the rural country off grid uses, I guess, for a, a Tesla. Driving back and forth to work, you know, charging from solar, driving down country roads, and seeing if the full self-driving works good on that. And it works pretty good on it, like I said. It's just some of the directions it will go is not gonna be the way that you may go on those back roads if you have a lot of different uh, options. It's gonna do some calculations and try to find what it believes to be the, the shortest or best route. I just don't know if that's always the case. You know, you kinda know your roads and your area better than, you know, uh, electronics and some kind of AI is gonna know, I guess, and Google Maps and all that. But think about hitting that subscribe button, hitting that like button, and thanks for watching.